Who you calling nigger? Huh? Who you calling nigger? Who you calling nigger? Huh? Who you calling nigger, bitch? Huh? Fuck who else, nigger, you fucking bitch? Yeah, fuck who else, nigger. Hey, that's it. It's hot out this motherfucker. Hey, Call me another nigga. Nigger. Call me another nigga. Nigger. Hey y'all, watch this. Umbrella. What is good, my people? We are live back again with another episode of the forecast. Now it's no surprise that we are under attack. We have been under attack for hundreds of years. But right now, we seem to be in another kind of violent stage. And with the murder of Ahmaud Arbery kind of setting the stage, there have been a number of cases of our blood being shed. But in most of these latest cases, like America has always done, they have criminalized us defending ourselves. It has always been illegal for us to defend ourselves. We're supposed to just let whatever happened to us happen. And there's a reason why America has a history of passing gun laws forbidding us from arming ourselves. From the slave codes to the black codes. They didn't even want us to be involved in their wars at first because black people would be armed. And lo and behold, after those wars, when those black veterans came home armed, they started shooting back when they were being terrorized. Then all of a sudden, guns became a problem in the hands of black people. And that's why it is important to know the gun laws in your state, even though typically they don't go by their own rules. And these laws were never meant to protect us. But we have to understand we have the right to defend ourselves. And when you love yourself, you want to preserve your life. And you'll go above and beyond to defend yourself. And that's why I wouldn't debate anybody about a black person being murdered. Not only is it disrespectful to the person, if you feel like it's wrong for us to defend ourselves, we don't need to be in the same society. I don't need you to make up the laws for me if you feel like it's okay for you to murder me, but it's not okay for me to defend myself. Because the moment you do talk about defending yourself, all of a sudden they start talking about, whoa, do we really want to go on that path? But we're already there if they're constantly shedding our blood. In Kentucky, the sister Brianna Taylor was shot and killed in her own home while she was in her bed with her boyfriend. Now let's go back and see what led the Louisville police to shoot this sister in her own home in the middle of the night. Her and Kenny believe that their house was being invaded and they had a right to try to protect themselves against a home invasion. Around 1 a.m. March 13th, the Louisville Metro Police Department Criminal Interdiction Unit executed a search warrant at the home of Brianna Taylor. Taylor and her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, were inside at the time. According to the search warrant, police requested a no-knock entry, but in a press conference the day after the shooting, police said they announced themselves before entering. Taylor family attorney Sam Aguiar says he does not believe that was the case. We had nice work from a private investigator and from canvassing the neighborhood. We've got four people that are very reliable that say there was no knocking, there was no announcing. According to civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who is also representing the Taylor family, Walker fired shots because he thought intruders were breaking into the apartment. One shot hit Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly. He was treated and released. Now Walker is charged with attempted murder of a police officer. Do African Americans have a right to set a Second Amendment? Doesn't he have the right to stand his ground against people he believe are attempting to burglarize his home? Details from the search warrant sparked new questions for the Taylor family about why the police raided her home in the first place. LMPD had been looking for Jamarcus Glover, a suspected drug dealer who had ties to Taylor. 
According to arrest records, Glover had been arrested before the raid. But the search warrant says Glover used Taylor's address as his home address, and police observed him picking up a package from her apartment back in January before driving to a known drug house. If they really thought that they were, that Brianna Taylor was, you know, a, a spot or a place for him to pick up packages and that these packages contain things that they shouldn't, then why in the world are they waiting until the middle of March to execute a one time, you know, a no knock drug raid? A lawsuit filed by the Taylor family against Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly, officers Miles Cosgrove and Brett Hankison, claims the officers blindly fired more than 20 shots into Taylor's apartment. The affidavit calls the officers' conduct grossly negligent, reckless and malicious. Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher talked about the investigation during his Wednesday afternoon news conference, saying LMPD's Public Integrity Unit is expected to wrap up their investigation in the coming weeks. And Governor Bashir says it's important we learn the facts. The truth is always the very best answer. Uh, whether it satisfies any any um, uh, particular person. And I just want to make sure that we get that, that we get that for the family and we get that for uh, the public. Kendrick Wilson, who's a Ford employee and small business owner, filed a lawsuit against Detective Brett Hankinson last October. Hankinson's what we feel is a pattern of bad behavior within the department. Attorney Ashley Hellman representing Kendrick Wilson says Hankinson arrested him three times between 2016 and 2018. They all happened at bars where the detective sometimes worked as an off duty security. The suit also states the two of them had various interactions outside of the arrest over a relationship with the same woman. Wilson's arrest in 2016 was after a fight he had at the Tin Roof Bar, but the charges were dismissed months later. In 2018, Hankinson arrested Wilson again. The citation was because a police dog signaled the presence of a narcotic odor in Wilson's pocket. But when Wilson emptied his pockets, he claims he only had money. According to the citation, Detective Hankinson recovered a plastic bag on the ground of what appeared to have cocaine. Body camera footage showed the officer locating the plastic bag on the sidewalk several feet away from Wilson, according to the lawsuit. It took our case not being taken seriously, and it took him remaining on LMPD's police force and ultimately being involved in taking someone's life for his behavior to get the attention that we were hoping our original lawsuit would get. The next month that year, a third arrest involving drugs, but those charges were also dropped a few months later. Detective Hankinson has denied all of the allegations. Since the deadly shooting of former EMT Brianna Taylor, the search warrant affidavit was made public, but attorney Hellman says the officers involved in Kendrick Wilson's case has requested the court to seal the affidavit. Now, the police said they were looking for somebody this sister Breonna Taylor knew, and so they got a no-knock warrant for her home. Now, mind you, the person they were looking for was already in custody, but at 1 o'clock in the morning while Breonna Taylor and her boyfriend Kenny Walker were asleep, all of a sudden the police used a battering ram to break in their home. Now, the police claimed they announced themselves, but nobody heard it. And his brother Kenny Walker said, Brianna heard somebody knocking on the door, and when she said, who is it, they didn't answer. So when the police broke their door down, they thought it was somebody trying to break in their house. So defending himself, his woman, and his house like a man is supposed to do, this brother Kenneth Walker got his gun and opened fire on the cops, who were in plain clothes, by the way. And one of the cops ended up getting shot. So then the police opened fire on his sister home from outside, and this sister ended up getting shot eight times and died. And then after this sister was murdered, her boyfriend Kenneth Walker was charged with attempted murder of a police officer just because he was trying to defend his house and his woman. Findings of an internal LMPD investigation into the fatal shooting of Breonna Taylor now in the hands of three more law enforcement officers, the Kentucky Attorney General, FBI and U.S. Attorney. Our continuing coverage on the police raid is all new here on the night team. Hello everyone, I'm Doug Prophet. The night team's Tyler Emery covered the appearance tonight by the police chief and the attorneys for Taylor's family as city leaders are also calling for more action. Several Metro Council members say an independent review of Brianna Taylor's case simply doesn't go far enough. A review is not enough. An investigation must be required. Members of the Metro Public Safety Committee express frustrations over the lack of answers and action from city leaders in the two months since a no-knock search warrant of Taylor's home led to her death. Responses that I have deemed to be lukewarm, weak, 
tepid and underwhelmingly vanilla. Several council members are calling for the ban of no-knock search warrants entirely. Attorneys for Taylor's family also spoke at the meeting and took aim at LMPD, including for not using a SWAT team to execute the middle of the night raid. A dangerous, reckless, unnecessary, and unjustifiable violation of her Fourth Amendment rights of search and seizure. Chief Steve Conrad did give the numbers on the department's use of no-knock search warrants. In 2019, of 3,085 total warrants served, SWAT was involved in 21 no-knock. So far this year, six no-knock warrants involve SWAT. I, I do not believe that the number that I'm giving you today is... Okay. Truly comprehensive. Attorneys representing Taylor's family say witnesses claim the LMPD narcotics officers never knocked or announced their presence, which LMPD claims they did per department policy. The initial report that was given by the head of PIU was that the officers knocked, they announced themselves, and then they were met with gunfire when they came in. Um, we're now up to six neighbors that say that there was no knock, no announce. We did not forego the announcement, even in a no knock warrant. The last thing we want to do is to have someone. Uh, Shoot at us. Councilwoman Sexton Smith has also called for the murder charges against Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, to be dropped. Attorneys say he acted out of self-defense when he shot one of the officers in the leg as they rammed into Taylor's apartment the night of her death. Anybody else that had busted into somebody's house, we would be calling it what it is, which is murder, which is execution. Uh, I understand you've also learned that the FOP the police union is holding a news conference tomorrow to react to this meeting. What should we expect to hear from them tomorrow about this? Well, Doug, FOP President Ryan Nichols didn't go into all of the specifics, but he did tell me that he took issue with Councilwoman Green's comments at the end of the meeting, calling Kenneth Walker a hero. Attorneys representing Breonna Taylor, the black emergency medical technician that was shot and killed by police officers in her own home are accusing the Louisville Metro Police of using false information to obtain the controversial no-knock warrant. A postal inspector in Louisville has reportedly confirmed that the Metro Police did not use his office to verify that suspicious packages were being sent to Taylor's home. The inspector also says another agency had been asked to look into the matter and had concluded that no packages of interest were being sent there. It comes after claims from the LMPD that there were that the suspect they were looking for, rather, used Taylor's address to receive those suspicious packages. Now, this botched raid, as they called it, was for a person that was already in custody because he had picked up a package from our home a month before. And not only was it because he picked up a package one time, the police probably used false information to get the warrant in the first place. And then on top of that, it turns out one of the cops involved, Brad Hankinson, had a history of harassing a black man because they were messing with the same girl. And he even tried to plant drugs on them. Now, as far as the brother Kenneth Walker, the prosecutor said they were gonna drop the charges for now. But we know in this country, it doesn't always turn out that way when black men defend themselves. In Georgia, a brother Jesse Murray was charged with murder after defending himself against four white thugs that were trying to jump him. A group of civil rights activists says the man on trial for shooting and killing a former police officer was unfairly denied the chance to use the stand your ground defense. Channel 2's Tom Jones is live in Clayton County where the judge said the man could not claim that he was defending himself and that the gun went off accidentally. Tom? And Dave, these groups, uh, these civil rights groups, disagree with the judge. Uh, they say Jesse Murray was attacked here. They say he was shot at and he was punched in front of an officer, but he's the only one facing charges. They think they know why. We're calling it what it is, NAACP. It is a race issue. These civil rights activists say when it comes to the Stand Your Ground law, it seems blacks just can't get justice. They point to what happened to Jesse Murray. Mr. Murray was defending himself it's an injustice to him that he was attacked and then he's the one who has to take the fall murray faces murder charges after a judge denied his request for immunity from prosecution under the stand your ground law murray testified during the hearing last year he was in fear of his life when nathan adams and his friends attacked him outside the benefield sports bar on old dixie highway he said during the attack his gun accidentally went off killing adams a former forest park police officer after the shooting someone shot at murray as murray sat in a patrol 
patrol car after being arrested. Testimony indicated he was assaulted by one of Adams' friends. He punched him in front of the police officer. Yet no one else was charged, the group says. Gerald Griggs says the stand your ground law is for African Americans too. You have the same right to defend yourself on, on others and be immune from prosecution. The groups want people to pack the courtroom when Murray's trial starts. So that the judge and the jury all know that the community is behind Mr. Murray and we want justice for Jesse. And the judge denied uh, Murray's motion for immunity, saying this. He said he didn't think he was in fear of his life, and the court couldn't reconcile Murray saying he was defending himself, but also saying the shooting was unintentional. Now, this brother, Jesse Murray, was at a bar with his wife when a drunk white boy, Nathaniel Adams, who was a former cop, started falling all into this brother's wife. So, of course, this brother, defending his wife, jumped in between them. Like, get away from my wife. So then about four white boys started threatening his brother. So he went outside to his car to get his gun so he could escort his wife. And then when he tried to get his wife out of the bar, one of the white boys said, she's not going anywhere. And then these four thugs just start savagely attacking his brother. Now, while they were beating him up, the gun in his pocket accidentally went off and it hit one of them. And they ran off and his brother was able to get away. But of course, when the police showed up, despite all of his injuries... This brother, Jesse Murray, was the only one that was arrested. They said somebody shot at him while he was in the police car, and somebody else punched him in the face while the police was standing right there. But this brother was the only one arrested. Now, this brother tried to use the stand your ground defense, which would be appropriate in this case, being attacked by four thugs. But a judge denied it, saying he doesn't believe he was in fear of his life, even though he was being savagely beaten. And the judge said he can't use stand your ground because the gun accidentally went off. So this brother, who was trying to defend his woman and defend himself, ended up having to take a plea deal so he wouldn't go to jail. But we see what happened when they shed our blood over and over and over. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because at some point, we got to stop them from shedding our blood. And if they know that it comes with consequences, then they're going to think twice about trying us. But if they know nothing's gonna happen but us begging and crying and pleading for justice and nothing ever happens, then they're just gonna keep doing it over and over and over. At the end of the day, we have to realize we are all we got. We gotta start protecting each other. We don't have any other choice. A report of new pictures now surfacing in the Ahmad Arbery investigation. He was shot and killed in February. His family says he was jogging in a Brunswick neighborhood. Gregory and Travis McMichael, a son and father charged with murder. Investigators say they followed, then shot Arbery. Now a UK publication is reporting a McMichael family member posted a photo of Ahmaud Arbery's body on Snapchat after his death. Joe Henke has the latest. The video of Ahmad Arbery along with Gregory and Travis McMichael is from a Brunswick neighborhood on February 23rd when Arbery was shot and killed. It went on social media earlier this month. It quickly went viral. Now today at a press conference held by the Atlanta NAACP, the conversation turned to how there are even more images and videos from that same day. We recently found out that another family member posted the dead, bloody body of Ahmad Arbery on Snapchat. The photo discussed during an Atlanta NAACP press conference was first reported in the UK tabloid, The Sun. The report details the daughter and sister of Gregory and Travis McMichael posting a photo showing Ahmad Arbery's body after the shooting in Brunswick's Satilla Shores neighborhood. The report quoted Lindsay McMichael saying she had no malicious intent and adding, the thing is, I'm a huge fan of true crime. I listen to four or five podcasts a week. I'm constantly watching that sort of thing. It was absolutely poor judgment. Benjamin Crump, one of several attorneys representing the Arbery family, tweeted absolutely disgusted. Just because you are a true crime fan does not give you any right to expose this disturbing image of Ahmad Arbery after he was murdered by your father and brother. He is not a trophy animal to be showcased. Gregory and Travis McMichael remain in jail and are still the only ones charged in Arbery's murder and the confrontation. Attorneys for the McMichaels previously said there are other videos showing what happened on February 23rd beyond this well-known cell phone video. An Arbery family attorney at today's NAACP press conference provided a bit more detail. Yes, there are additional videos that show a greater portion of the pursuit 
uh, according to the timeline, the police reports and the video evidence that exists, we know that uh, this went on for a lot longer than those 38 seconds that have been have be, have gone viral at this point. That's my great. That's my mother-in-law right there. Huh? You know, you stay huh? right there, best friend. They That's got guns and shit on right you. There. Put your hands what down. Put your hands down. Put that down. What the fuck? Look at the fucking gun you got. What the fuck? Fuck you. Fuck you. We just need you to listen to us. That he fuck chilling. you. He chilling. Fuck stand you. Dude, we need you to stand up and walk back towards our vehicle. Pussy asses. What's your name? Good job. Fuck you. Hey, dude. Just, just listen to us. He's scared. Y'all have guns on him. He's black. Do y'all not see how many black people are getting shot? Do y'all not see that? And y'all have guns on him. He's only 21. Of course he's fucking scared. Of course he's fucking scared. I'll be scared too. I ain't walking towards shit because y'all gonna shoot. Y'all gonna find any fucking reason to shoot, bro. Y'all gonna find any reason because he's black. Because he's black. Because the color of our fucking skin, we get punished. We get punished. We get fucking punished. Y'all gonna fucking shoot me. Put your guns down. Put the guns down! Hey, dude, I'm scared! I'm scared! Okay. Okay. No, put the guns up! I'm scared! I'm scared! No. He don't got nothing on him! Put the guns down! Put the guns down! Why the fuck are you with me? You got a motherfucker! Stay right there, baby! Stay right there! Hey, the fuck? No! That's why I want to go ahead and look! Hey, look! 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 That's my mother. Oh, she's my mother. What's the problem? What y'all here for? That's my mother. She's my mother. Okay. Why would he talk to you? Why would he talk to you? Why would he talk to you? Why would you have a gun out? I would be just as fucking scared. And it's not no reason for all of them to be pulling up like y'all really finna shoot some shit. I don't like that. I don't like that. He's black. Just put your guns up. If y'all put y'all guns up, he'll talk to y'all, bro. Just put your guns up. We're black. They shoot black people. He's not getting the fuck up. He's not getting the fuck up. He's not getting the fuck up, bro. Best friend, you stay right there, baby. You stay right there. We're fucking black. Put the guns up. He's not getting up. He's not getting up. Look at how look, look at y'all face compared to us. Call somebody black out here. Call somebody black out here, bro. Call somebody black out here. Granny, granny, granny. Just want granny. Back up. Okay. Okay. Girl, like they finna shoot something. Girl, like I'm woman is suing four white police officers in a St. Louis suburb for allegedly assaulting her and her adult son. Marvia and Derek Gray were accused of stealing a television in March from a Sam's Club. They say they bought the TV earlier in the day and they had receipts. She says they suffered physical and emotional injuries from a, their violent arrest. In an exclusive interview with Adriana Diaz, they said they were terrified of being killed. The only thing I can do is just watch him die. That's all, just die. Marvy and Derek Gray say they're still traumatized. <laughs> After this incident with police, when they were accused of stealing a TV. They just start manhandling us like we was animals. Late last night, the city of De Pere provided CBS News with surveillance video that shows what happened before the incident in March. The Grays appear to be in an animated discussion with Sam's Club staff before an officer enters and reaches for Derek, who pulls away. His 68-year-old mother tries to shield him, but then another officer enters the store and a struggle ensues with Marvia against the wall and Derek slammed to the ground. 
According to the Gray's lawsuit, earlier that day, Derek bought the TV for his mother at the store, but when it didn't fit into his car, he returned for it later. That's when a police officer allegedly accused him of stealing the TV. But Derek was allowed to leave after a store associate confirmed the purchase. The suit claims the officer later called in an attempted theft. The Gray's lawyer provided this receipt to CBS News. The Grays say they decided to return the purchase because of the theft accusation. That's when they say things escalated. And when I looked around and all this blood, just blood coming down on this child's eyes, on this child's face. Derek says his head was split open and three of his teeth were shattered. I could not get over turning around. And my son said, Mom, they are hurting me, Mom. They are hurting me. The incident ended with Gray, a security officer, being wheeled out of the store with his head bandaged. He says he is still in disbelief. Do you think this was racially motivated? Yes. No, no doubt. Yes, that it was. Yes, ma'am. I know because I'm a security officer. Yes. I know when I'm being racially profiled. Attorney Andrew M. Stroth represents the Gray family. Could it be that there was reason to believe that your clients were involved in something? Well, there's there's nothing that the Grays did to provoke that type of an attack. My thing is, if they were a white older woman and her white son, would that same event have happened? I know about respecting the law, but does the law respect us? That's the question. A confrontation caught on camera between a property owner and a Jacksonville police officer. The woman says that it turned ugly when more officers arrived. Baby, no, 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 stop. Hey, please, 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 stop, stop. The woman being arrested is 29-year-old Brittany Williams. She said that she was injured when police officers used excessive force after entering her home without a warrant and pinning her down. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avigny has been speaking with Williams and reaching out to JSO about the video. And Eric's joining us live with a look at what he's learned. Eric? Yes, right now her attorney is trying to get those charges dropped after an on-duty officer admitted in that recording that you just saw that he was on private property reading emails and refused to leave after the homeowner asked him to. And that homeowner, of course, was Williams. But also in that same recording, we hear the officer say that she assaulted him. Our camera was recording when 29-year-old Brittany Williams walked out of the Duval County Jail and greeted her family and boyfriend who recorded this confrontation with police the night before. I'm in a lot of pain. I've been asking for medical attention for since I got here. Williams was arrested and charged with battery on a law enforcement officer and resisting arrest. She says it all started when she asked a police officer in her driveway to leave since he was not conducting official police business. At the beginning of this video, she's on the phone with 911 dispatch asking to send someone over to force the officer to get off her property. This is my driveway. Why are you here? He started yelling. But when more police arrive, one of the officers appeared to slowly walk towards her. So he told me, oh, my supervisor's coming. And then next thing I know, I'm being attacked from both sides on my front porch. So before they get to me, I'm trying to go back into my house. Then we see this. Baby, no, 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 stop. Hey, please, please, stop, stop, stop. News for Jack's crime and safety expert Ken Jefferson says police will not typically park in someone's private driveway unless it's for official police business. Uh, the uh, person arrested was well within her rights to ask the officer, was he there for official business? What was he doing? Um, he's just sitting there. Later, later learned that he was just sitting there reading emails. At this point, we can't see what's happening, but we can hear an officer threaten to arrest her boyfriend. Please, man, it's my car, man. I'm going to jail too. What did I do? What am I doing? Without interfering. Yeah, I was very compliant the whole time. I was very compliant for a boyfriend whose uh, um, a girlfriend is being attacked by three officers. We later hear the officer tell her boyfriend she's been being arrested because she threw something at him before the video was recorded. The girl threw, threw whatever she has on her face on the spoon I need in the car. Jefferson says if what the officer says is true, then that's where Williams went wrong. You can't do that. That's battery on a law enforcement officer. I don't care how minor it is. Now, a JSO spokesperson tells News for Jax that the department is aware of the allegations and that video and that this entire matter is under an administrative review. 
Well, tonight, a racially charged case from North Carolina is capturing national attention. It involves a white off-duty deputy leading a group of armed people to the home of a black woman and her 18-year-old son. 18-year-old Damian Shepard answered the door that day. The group then reportedly tried to force their way into the house. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avigny spoke with Shepard, his mother, and our crime and safety expert, and he's joining us now live. Eric, our crime and safety expert says this is another example of perceived racial imbalance when it comes to justice. Yes, he does says that, you know, you have to think that the will of justice is always turning. But uh, lately we've seen examples of that will slowing down and looking like also looking like it's almost uh, going into a pause when it comes to alleged crimes on against African-Americans by white men with close ties to law enforcement. Back on the night of May 3rd near Wilmington, North Carolina, a neighbor's home surveillance camera records more than a dozen white men with flashlights and guns outside Monica Shepard's home. She and her son Damien were inside. They were trying to get um, into the house. In this surveillance video, you can barely hear Miss Shepard yelling at them to leave. Investigators say the group of men were led by Jordan Keita, an off-duty deputy from a neighboring county who was in uniform and was looking for a missing teenage girl. Damien says the group attempted to enter the home thinking the girl was inside. At some point, I was thinking in my head, back in my head, they have guns the whole time, so I have to watch everything I do. Concerned neighbors call 911. These are pictures of the neighbors who came out as deputies arrived. Although the men, including Keeter, were still on scene being interviewed by law enforcement, no arrests were made even after Miss Shepard and her son say they felt terrorized in their own home. Someone came onto our property and broke the law. Five days later, misdemeanor trespassing and breaking and entering charges were announced against Keita. Deputy Keita was also fired from the new Hanover Sheriff's Office. News for Jack's crime and safety expert Ken Jefferson says it doesn't make sense to delay charging someone when you have this many neighbors witnessing the event. Why wasn't this arrest done immediately following the crime, following the incident? What changed? Why is there a delay? A spokesperson for the Pender County Sheriff's Office tells News for Jax a mandate is in place by the DA's office that says law enforcement officers who commit certain misdemeanors can't be immediately arrested at the scene until after their case has been investigated. Jefferson says optically, this doesn't look good. Now, I have tried reaching out to that former deputy, Jordan Keita, by phone, but he nor anyone uh, living at that listed address is picking up the line. I also left a text message, but no one got back with me. As for that missing girl, we found out that she is a 15-year-old runaway who was found somewhere else, not even in that community. A black Des Moines man who says he was brutally beaten by two white men over the weekend wants justice. The NAACP says it was a racist attack. KCCI's Laura Terrell is live at the Des Moines Police Station tonight with the latest on this situation. Des Moines police are still investigating. They call it a serious assault. They say a motive will determine if it was a hate crime. Why did it have to be this brutal? Like, why did it have to go this far to where my where my life was almost taken? Darquan Jones says he is traumatized. The 22 year old stood in front of his grandmother's house Tuesday, speaking for the first time since Saturday's assault that put him in the hospital. I'm still hurt. I just want to know, you know, just why it happened to me. You know, it just, it just. It, like, it really just breaks my heart because I'm not even, you know, a type of guy to get in trouble. Jones says he has five broken bones in his face, a broken arm, and a broken wrist. He says two white men accused him of robbery when he was walking home from his girlfriend's house early Saturday morning at 52nd and South Union in Des Moines. Just come forward. If y'all feel like, you know, I did this or did that, you know, y'all can have the, you know, police fingerprint my hand. Jones says the men beat him and one called him a racial slur. This is not right to me. This is not right. I mean, my son is, look how tall he is compared, look how big he is, it's not, it, the way you did this to him is not right. The underlying issue um, is that invisible disease of racism. The Des Moines NAACP stood alongside Jones in support. There's clearly and apparently people in our streets that have a belief system that is not a belief system that we all want, would like to live by. Des Moines police say they are talking to witnesses and following up on leads. They are trying to figure out the motive behind the assault. You gotta find somewhere else better to pee than this. Uh, like, uh, I'm good, boss. You got your idea, any my man? For what? Because there's no parking allowed here either, especially urinating. Is there, that's not happening. 
That's... All right, go ahead and touch that with your finger, that little puddle of water. Sure. What's the problem? All right, now lick it. Lick it? Yeah. Did you just, uh, hold on, hold on. See, I gotta pissed. record this. Because if it was water, this. Hold on, hold you wouldn't on, be doing that. Record it. Record it all you want. I just had an officer just walk up to me. Because me no one's gonna ground. lick pee. No one's gonna lick pee. Who's I gonna drive? lick dirt? Not you think because I'm black, I'm gonna sit here and touch some to dirt do with and race. lick it? When I drive past and you're standing like this, and I can drive see past. water. Yeah. When I'm I drove sitting past. here organizing stuff in my truck, right. I had to move stuff around. Do you have your ID in you? Because no, there's no I'm parking don't. here. Why don't you call your chief out here? Call your chief out here, because now I have a problem. You're going to sit here because right now you walk you're up to urinating. me. I'm not urinating. What's that foamy water right there? There ain't no foamy you know water what? anywhere else. That's what happens when you pee in the gravel. You, no, you All know right? what happens when you, you know what? Call your chief Do you have your driver's here. license or anything out no, here? No, I don't. You need to call somebody What's your last name, sir? Call some. I need you to call chief right. out here. Well, I'm going to write you a ticket and I'll call him when I get back in my car. All right? You going to write me a ticket? Yes. So I need your driver's license or ID card. For what? Because I need to know who I'm writing the ticket to. For what? Parking were prohibited. Where right. is there a sign? Okay. Yes. Where's the, back, the sign? Well, that one got knocked over, but there's signs okay. posted over there. There's no sign. If there's a sign, All if right. I'm not allowed to stop here, then fine. All right. I don't have a is, problem moving my vehicle, but you right. need to call. And you're you're urinating you're not in public. Sit here. No, I'm not. I just witnessed you urinating you did in public. Not. All right, then what was that water trickling down when I drove past here? You see all this rain out here? Sweet. I don't see any rain I, at the moment. Give me a second. I got to record this because I got this white officer out here and he just sat here. This is so disrespectful. All right, I got my sergeant on the way. Do you have your ID on you? What's your last name, sir? Don't worry about it. Sir, what's your last name? This is your last chance you're going to go to jail. Do you understand For that? For what? For obstructing identification. What is your last name? I'm not obstructing anything. I'm asking your name. I'm not obstructing I have a lawful anything. reason. You have no lawful reason. I'm, I haven't done anything Come here. wrong. Come here. Sir, sir, call Get your chief out here. Don't touch Come me. Here. Come oh, here. Uh-uh, don't. Come here. Don't touch me. Turn around, please. Don't touch your me. You're under arrest. Don't t Hold it. Hands behind your back. You're under I'm arrest. A, listen. Turn around, place your hands back. I'm a law under arrest. Officer. Hold hands it. behind hold your tight. back. I will tase you. Hands For behind what? your back. I will tase you. what? Put your hands For, behind your you back. Recording? You are under. Yes, I am. Put for your. What? Turn please around. Place your, your hands behind your back. I'm gonna wait for your sergeant. Turn around. Place I'm your hands behind your back. I'm gonna stand here and wait for your sergeant to come. Turn around. I'm gonna stand here and wait for your sergeant. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stand here and wait for your sergeant to come. Give me your hands. Be in your back. I'll send my dog. I've done it. Now. Now. I'm gonna wait for your sergeant to come. Please don't have that dog bite me. I'm gonna wait for you. On the ground now! I'm gonna wait On the you. ground now! Take him! I'm gonna wait for your sergeant. Hands are... Take him! I'm gonna wait for your sergeant to come. I'm gonna wait for your sergeant to come. Oh, the dog is fighting me. Well, hands the dog is fighting me. Hands behind your the back now. The dog is fighting me. Hands behind your back now. The dog is fighting me. When you stop your dog from hands biting your back. When you stop your when dog. You put your hands behind your back. When you stop your dog hands from biting Hands behind your back. back. Will you stop your dog from biting This is sad America right here. Now I am going to fuck with you. This is sad America right here. Go ahead, racist, take my picture, Racist, man. racist old white women in Glendale, Nebraska, and you homeless. That's what's sad about it. Yeah. Now, now I am going to fuck with you. Since you think a black guy walking the same sidewalk, sidewalk as you is a threat, now I am going to fuck with you, bitch, and you on Get camera. Get lost. Fucking meth head. You are a racist cunt, all right? Your phone doesn't have any service. Who are you calling? You have no house and no place to go. Shut up. You probably got the coronavirus, bitch. Fuck you, make people look bad, racist bitch. Get to the fucking hospital because your dumb ass want to keep saying shit. I told you. I you want to keep saying shit. I you heard. say you heard, dog. Let me let me hear you say, nigga, out your motherfucking mouth again, and it's on. Period. Period. Time. You're stupid, Phil, for real. Like, you literally just called him a nigga straight to his face. Like, you're stupid. You deserve everything you fucking get. All right, babe, let's go. For real, let's go. He got it. His ass is out. He's Did done. You? Did you? Did you? You sure?
All right, and we back on the forecast. Now, we have to understand one of the fundamental aspects of white supremacy is emasculating the black man and putting him in a weak position where he cannot defend his own family. He cannot defend himself. That's why the number one program in America has always been to destroy the black family. And once you emasculate a black man and take away his ability to defend his family, that leaves the whole community vulnerable. And now today, we'll be quick to defend everybody else but our own, even at our own detriment. We will fight for everybody else's rights. We will fight for everybody else's lives. But in reality, our lives don't matter to any other group but our own. Because even when we try to protect and defend others, we still always fit that description. But these others aren't going to be so quick to stand up for you. In Orlando, a brother, Jashawn Hodge, was shot by Orlando police trying to protect a little girl. Now, let's go back and see how this unarmed brother trying to protect a little girl ended up getting shot and killed by the Orlando police. The breaking news about an attack on a nine-year-old girl and an officer-involved shooting. Police say the child was stabbed multiple times and is now in the hospital. Police say the man they think is the suspect was shot and killed by officers. Let's get you to News 6's Nadine Giannis. She is live in St. Cloud where this all happened. Nadine, first off, how's that little girl doing? Matt, thankfully, the chief says as of right now, she is in stable condition at Arnold Palmer Hospital. But I got to tell you, it was difficult to hear the injuries that she sustained in what the chief called a violent attack. A nine year old girl with multiple fractures and stab wounds to her face and upper body. And that is what led up to the officer involved shooting uh, today. So take a look at some of the video from earlier. Chief Pete Gauntlet said that this started around one o'clock. Police getting two calls about the attack of the little girl. And when they got to the scene, they say they found a man who met the description uh, running erratically through neighborhoods, behind houses, even burglarizing an RV park, the chief said. And when officers caught up to him, they say there was some kind of confrontation and that two St. Cloud officers shot the man. They tried to save his life, but he was pronounced dead at the scene right around 1 o'clock. Chief Gauntlet believing he was the one who attacked the little girl. And we have a lot of investigating to do, and we've turned this investigation into two separate investigations. The St. Cloud Police Department will investigate the stabbing of this, un this young girl, which is horrific and is not totally unacceptable in our society today. But minutes after this news conference, a woman and some family members who say that she was the mother of the man who was shot said that this little girl was like a niece to this man. She wants more answers because she believes that there's more to this story. That's like my son's niece. My, my son and this family have been knowing each other since my son was 11 years old. I want to know what happened to my son, but they're saying they can't give me any information until this is over with. And so there's a lot of investigation happening. St. Cloud Police Chief saying there are two crime scenes where that little girl was attacked and the second one, which is right behind me, uh, where this man was shot and killed. As of right now, the FDLE is investigating this crime scene. The St. Cloud Police Department say they want to get to the bottom of who attacked that little girl as well. Now, I don't know what was happening, but somebody ended up attacking and stabbed a nine-year-old girl, probably doing a home invasion. Now, this brother, Jashawn Hodge, happened to be over there and tried to protect her by chasing off the intruder. Now, when the police got there, they saw this brother had blood on him and he was running, most likely chasing the person who actually did it. But of course, the police said this brother fit this notorious vague description we all seem to fit. And instead of asking questions, finding out what was going on, Officer Devin Dunn saw this brother and just decided to open fire and killed him. Now, it turns out, even though they're unrelated, this little girl was supposed to be like a niece to this brother, and he was always over their house. And the police ended up killing his unarmed brother, even though he was the wrong person. A nine-year-old little girl stabbed in the face and neck. Police shooting and killing the suspect. Good evening. I'm Luann Sorrell. I'm Charles Belay. Sky Fox over the scene where police say they spotted the accused suspect running and covered in blood. But the family of that man and the family of the little girl stabbed say police shot the wrong guy. Fox 35 Samantha Sosa is live tonight. Samantha, thankfully this little girl is in stable condition, but what are police saying about these allegations? 
Right, Luann, we're hearing this little girl is stable, but her mom telling me she needed surgery. As for police, they're not looking for other suspects. They believe they got their guy. The crowd calling for justice in an officer-involved shooting. Police say Officer Devin Dunn shot and killed Jayshawn Hodge last week. Investigators believe Hodge is connected to a stabbing of a nine-year-old girl. Police say right before the shooting, Hodge was covered in blood and trying to break into an RV. Protesters say the officer shot the wrong guy. He was a victim, just like Jada Lee. Home invasion, stabbed, and the police shot and killed him. And we want the true story out. He was not a suspect. He was a victim. We're here fighting for justice. He was a son, a friend, a father. He left two children behind. And we're just here fighting. Everyone got together to fight for him. Officer Dunn is currently on administrative leave for the duration of the investigation. According to Officer Devin Dunn's personnel file, he's only been with the police department since December 6th of last year. And while there's no sign of discipline on his record, a summary of his work does show what his superiors call deficiencies. Documents provided to WESH 2 by the St. Cloud Police Department detail how he has hesitated in the past and has been slow to take action. The documents also state he holds back and fails to engage. But on May 5th, police say Officer Dunn did engage. This surveillance video shows the moment police say Officer Dunn fired his weapon, killing Jashawn Hodge. Police say Hodge was suspected of stabbing a nine-year-old girl in the face and upper body. Dunn is now on administrative leave and the shooting is being being investigated by FDLE. Now, even though both the little girl family and his brother family said it was the wrong person, the police are still calling him a suspect and saying they shot the right person. Now, I haven't heard them mention any weapon that would have been on him if he stabbed his little girl, but the police said right now they aren't even going to look for any other suspects. And even before this brother was shot and killed, the police themselves said this cop Devin Dunn had deficiencies. But then when he killed the wrong, innocent black man, all of a sudden it's outstanding police work. Justice for Justice for Justice for Protesters gather outside the St. Cloud Police Department Saturday holding up signs and demanding answers about a deadly officer-involved shooting that killed Jashawn Hodge earlier this week. We want justice for my cousin. He was a victim, home invasion, stabbed, and the police shot and killed him. And we want the true story out. He was not a suspect. He was a victim. St. Cloud police say Hodge was a suspect in the brutal stabbing of a nine-year-old girl. When they got to the area around 3rd Street and Georgia Avenue, a neighbor's surveillance camera captured some of the confrontation that shows a man appear to be taking off running and then falling down in between two officers. One of those officers is Devin Dunn, who is now on administrative leave. State investigators are taking a closer look at this video, and the girl is now at Arnold Palmer Hospital. So far, police are responding to these shooting allegations by saying it's too early in their investigation to say for sure what happened. I think that's speculation on whoever's part that is. And we have a lot of investigating to do, and we've turned this investigation into two separate investigations. The St. Cloud Police Department will investigate the stabbing of this, un this young girl which is horrific and is not totally unacceptable in our society today. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement is looking into the shooting itself. In the meantime, family and friends of the 21 year old say Hodge was not the person who stabbed the nine year old girl. He was a son, a friend, a father. He left two children behind and we're just here fighting. Everyone got together to fight for him. Justice for Sean. Now, of course, when it comes to the police shooting an innocent black man, it's always too early to say anything. They're always still investigating. It doesn't matter how much investigating they've done, they always find a way to charge a black man or a black woman right away. But that's a part of staying on code. And as long as they call this brother a suspect and criminalize him like they do with every one of us, then they can justify their actions. Because it's harder to justify shooting an innocent man who was trying to protect the victim and chase down the real criminal, but was murdered before the cops asked any questions. But at the end of the day, we have to understand and we cannot be afraid to protect ourselves and to defend ourselves. And even if we don't, then the same thing will keep happening. I'm more afraid not to do something than to do something. Because I know if I don't do something, then the same thing could happen to me next. Until this system is destroyed, we have to realize we are all we got. And we have to get on code like they get on code. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what kind of differences they have. They will put all that aside to keep you in your place. And until we start responding with more urgency than they do to get out of the position that we're in, then we're going to stay in this position.
Stop doing her. Why you doing her like that, though, bro? Stop Why you resisting. doing her like that? Put your hand behind your back. It's a whole female. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. God. It's a whole female. Why you doing her like that? Stop resisting. Put your hands behind your back. Stop resisting. Come behind your back right now. Look at this shit, man. Check on y'all peoples, man. Check on y'all peoples. Baby, it's okay. Stop fighting. Check on y'all peoples, man. Put your hands behind your back. Check on y'all peoples. Check on y'all peoples, man. Look at this shit. Look. Why you doing her like that? Put your hands behind your back. Why you doing her like that? Why you doing her like that? That's a whole female. That's a female. And I got it on camera. That's a female. That's good, man. We're in here. Copy no, that's that's not how he. That's, that's not how he treat his female at home, though. He would he be in be the same place, mother. We do his female like that. Stop doing her like that. That's a female, bro. No, no. Right, that's a whole female, though, bro. No, bro. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. I'm cool. I ain't got no warrants. I'm cool. Still get back, but that's I'm gonna get back, but I ain't got no warrants. That's hella wrong. That's wrong. That's fucked up. That's wrong. I will give y'all a copy because that's wrong. That's wrong. It's cool. I'm going to post it on Facebook. It'll go viral. I'm going to post it on Facebook. It'll go viral. Look at this shit. She's not no nigga, bro. That's fucked up. That's a whole female. Have you ever seen a real <laughs> rock star? It's not going to be Taurus. Throw it. Yeah. Oh, wait. Right. Yeah. Glock. And then it's throw it. Pull it. Yeah. Oh, Thank us. I did. I'm so sorry. That wasn't you. That was um, Brooke. Who said it? No, I was singing this. I'm so sorry. I was. <laughs> I don't think that you said that. I don't think. I mean, no, there there was, I mean, no, maybe it was Patrick. Yeah, but also it could have been the other recording. Um. Anyway, I said that word. I don't. I don't think I said that word, but now I'm like, oh god. I've never called anybody that. We don't say that word. My dad would kill us. So y'all can think I said whatever I did, or think I'm something I'm not, but I'm not that. This man just this man just called me a nigga. This man just called me a nigga at work. I can fucking take yours too. Why are you taking pictures for? Oh, you gonna be famous, man. You just called me a nigga at a state public building. Okay. Oh my god. You wanna apologize now? Before this go public? You about to be famous. You you I got you on camera calling me a nigga. What am I supposed to do? You want to apologize now? Mm -hmm. I just asked you to move. People got to walk through here. I said you could park right here, and people have to walk through here. You just had to admit. Came around taking pictures. I took a picture because you got hostile with me, sir, and then you called me a nigga. You want to apologize? Well, I didn't mean it. I'm an Indian. What's the difference? Okay, but do you want to apologize? I just did. What did you say? You say sorry? Yes. Say it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Okay. But what I mean is, it's just. Okay, I'm tired of waiting for him. I'm going to go anyway. Okay. I'm trying to leave. And I got super neighborhood, the super neighbor over here blocking me in. So I'm going live. This is what I'm dealing with right oh, now. This is what I'm dealing with. This is who I'm dealing with. Napoleon, move out the way. My name's David Stewart. I don't care what your name is. Get out the way. I don't care. Move out the way, sir. You picked the wrong day. Move out the way.
Can you tell him to hang up and move so I can leave? Thank you. Okay. These are private streets. And apparently you need a gate code to get in here, right? Yeah, that's correct. So how did I get in here? I don't know where you're going. It was none of your business. I'm going out. That's where I'm going, but you're in my I'm way. I'm not arguing with you anymore. Now so I'm then move out the way then. I'm not moving. All you have to do is get, tell me where you're going. I don't have to tell you shit, and you're pissing me off. No, I don't. The Homeowners Association. He and a co-worker were making a delivery to this neighborhood here off Northeast 131st and Eastern. The person he was making the delivery to gave him a code to get through the gate. He's literally got me blocked in. This is cell phone video of Miller on his delivery after a man blocked his truck. The man on the video claims to be a board member of the Homeowners Association and demands to know why Travis was on his street. I ask you one question. I, no, it's none of your business. I think because I was a black man and I had another black man with me trying to leave. Travis says he refused to answer, staying in his truck, recording on Facebook Live. As the man said, he was calling the police. The entire confrontation lasting nearly 30 minutes. Travis's emotions overflowing. This incident coupled by the loss of three family members within a month. I always say to myself that I'm going to come home to my wife and my kids. The man eventually let Travis leave after confirming with another homeowner that he had just received a delivery. We reached out to the man in the video by phone and on Facebook to find out why he blocked this driver in. So far, we haven't gotten a response. As for Travis, he tells me he was overwhelmed by the outpouring of support online. I have to. You know, this hour is raised. He says while this encounter was heartbreaking, he's a forgiving man. Get out here and tell me shit. Say it. Say it out here. You lying like hell. You can put it on video camera. I don't care. Come on, say it. No, you come out here and tell me again you're going to whoop me. That's what I want you to do. Put it on video camera. I want you to. No, I, I, no, you don't lie. Man, you, you lying like, like, like hell, you, bro. You gonna beat my ass. Come out here and do it. That's what I want you to do. Now, man, this dude lying like hell. Man, this dude straight lying, bro. Man, you know this man lying, bro. God, this man came out of nowhere and started cursing, bro. Man, man you know one thing I don't feel is that right there. Right there. Right there. I want you to just say what you said when I was on, on your ground. This man came out and started. You tell me to move. Um, you right. I didn't never say I wouldn't. I don't move off of your grass. But you didn't have to come out there cussing me like that, like I'm some child. I ain't no little boy. I'm no little boy. I wait till the police come. You can record all you want, bro. Yeah, I got you. Right there. I got that's you. That's where girl. your power at, right there. That's your power. That's his power. That's where your power at, right there. Where you going? Man, I ain't finna waste my time with you. You got my information. You got my information. They'll find me. They'll find me. You need to get your glasses back on. I thought you yeah, I thought you were gonna whoop my ass too. We talked to one of the customers who took some of the photos. Uh, he tells us there were plenty of people inside the store when the man wearing the KKK hood was shopping here at the Vons on Saturday. Now, the sheriff's department was not called here, but they tell us they are looking into this incident. I was shocked. It was shocking to me. And that was a blatant display of racism right there. I didn't believe it. It's like, 
No, not my bonds. Reaction from shoppers over these photos that went viral over the weekend of a man wearing a KKK mask while shopping in this Santee Vaughn store. Everybody has a, a, a right to express themselves, but um, like I said, we all know what the Klan represents, and I don't think that's okay. That is not okay. A spokesperson for Vons tells News 8 the employees were shocked too, and several of them asked the man to remove the hood. She says he ignored their requests until he was in the checkout area. Santee Mayor John Minto says this person does not represent Santee. He told us this over the phone. It's sad when somebody goes out there and wears a symbol of hatred. You know, being ignorant in public is not against the law, but it should be in some cases. The San Diego County Sheriff's Department confirms detectives are looking into the incident and, quote, will pursue any appropriate criminal charges. Meanwhile, the San Diego Anti-Defamation League says incidents of hate are on the rise. Regional Director Tammy Gillies. San Diego is better than this and that we have to stand up for each other. We have to be allies to each other. Shoppers like Jennifer Matarazzo say with everything going on right now, this is the last thing grocery store employees should have to deal with. And the store employees are having a hard enough time as it is. You know, my, my family works for the grocery industry as well. And... I wouldn't appreciate my daughter having to deal with that either. It's just not okay. You can say what you want to say, but don't come in there with that on. And the Sheriff's Department is reaching out to the public about this incident. They are asking anyone with information to contact them. The police chief and the sheriff say they were told the block party was a memorial for a man murdered years ago, that organizers had a permit. They say there was no permit and that there was no mention of a memorial in the advertisement. To wave the race card around is a coward's way of saying this was out of control. This was an embarrassment. Volusia County Sheriff Mike Chitwood, DeLand Police Chief Jason Umberger say they got wind of the party in the predominantly African-American community of Spring Hill through this flyer, which makes no mention of a memorial. For much of the day, though large, it was generally peaceful. As day turned to night. The thing that initially started was a deputy got a rifle pointed at him. And that's when I think the, the whole dynamic changed. Get back, you got a gun, get back. You understand me? Investigators say 95% of attendees were out to have a good time, but a small number, particularly those from out of county, caused chaos, they say. Law enforcement witnessed the rifle incident, a handgun being passed around. You had 5% that was out there inciting a riot, carrying firearms, selling drugs, and destroying the community life, the quality of life for the community. A DeLand police officer struck in the head by a glass jar. A VSO deputy was struck with a bar stool and another sustained a leg injury. Meantime, officials say the party was moving from place to place, endangering motorists, pedestrians. Officials say pop-up parties occur regularly in Spring Hill, usually without issue. This one, they say, took a different turn. With weapons and drugs recovered, seven arrests. You're out there doing your job. You, you need to get support from the community, black, white, brown, or yellow. It doesn't matter what color or what happened out there, it was wrong. Officials say clearly the event was not a great example of social distancing, but law enforcement officials say they can't force folks to stay apart, only to obey the law. In DeLand, Volusia County, Claire Metz, West 2 News. Officers admit that there has been a historical mistrust of police in the Spring Hill community. They say they have been working on restoring that, but that this event shows that more dialogue is needed. Tonight, the police commissioner is responding to accusations that the NYPD has a racial double standard in enforcing social distancing. The outcry coming after several videos showing people of color in violent confrontations with police. CBS2 has learned that according to NYPD records, the majority of those who have been ticketed and sent to court over social distancing are black and Hispanic. Still, Commissioner Dermot Shea says it is not about race. No one is talking about the disparity of the last 10 homicide victims in New York City. We have had death threats on police officers in New York City and their families. Over 10 second videos where the police officers are dealing with individuals that quite frankly fight not with the police department, they fight with everyone. Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams says something needs to change here. I would hope that they don't get on the defense, but get on the offense to stop an over-aggressive behavior by some police officers. The goal of saving a life can't come in a package of destroying a life. 
Adams, a former NYPD captain, added that any threats to the police are unacceptable. You have a fucking license. Okay. I want you to go to fucking license. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? I want to see it. Wow. Fucking stupid bitch. God, no, I'm, I'm you, done, babe. Man, fuck I'm you, done. you fucking cunt bitch. I'll fuck you up. I'm telling you now. Don't I will that. fuck you up. I will fuck you up. Now you've got two. I you've will got two guns. You up. Assault. I will fuck. Assault. I don't fucking care. I'll fuck you Assault. up. You fuck the boss. Come on, man. Baby, I was taking a video. You fucking cunt. Fuck you, you bastard bitch. Get some bastard. Oh, now I'm a Kaffer. Wow. Hey, hey, go, man. Man. It's Long elevates. Man. It's a man. fucking accident, you bastard bitch. Hello, Hello man. Hey, 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 man. From doing business in here. Okay. Yeah, this one no understand. This one English. Trust me more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chair, we have understand English. Have taken our council license, and we are going to write to you. We are revoking them. No business here. You are closed now. Closed now. Yeah. Now. Because yes, close now. not even China man here. The one you are cutting was where. No, yes, I mean no. No, no cutting here, brother. Go and cut here at home. You are closed now. Okay. Yeah, this no problem. Yes, already closed. Yeah, already closed. But so, so if it's closed, what are you doing inside? For the, me and his family, and the police here cooking. Me home, no police are cooking. Close. I'm coming yes. back in one hour. If I find you, I'll get you arrested for parading illegally because our license we have taken. Because you are discriminating blacks and closing and only attending to Chinese and stopping blacks. You lie that you've closed, but you are doing business here with Chinese. There's no segregation. This license doesn't permit you. And also putting the prices in Chinese. It's illegal. Put in English. If you want, put in Nyanja. This is not Wuhan. As nations around the world uh, try to prevent the spread of coronavirus, a side effect of the illness is growing. Discrimination of people based on race. Ramey and Asensio reports. This sign at a McDonald's in China said black people are not allowed to enter. Huh? Africans have been detained by police in the southern city of Guangzhou to fear they're spreading coronavirus. Some forced to sleep on the street after getting evicted from their homes. In response, officials have said, in effect, that racism does not exist in China. Beijing is shooting itself in the foot. Dr. Adams Badomo is one of the world's leading experts on China-Africa relations. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs has said that there is no racism in China. What do you make of that? There is this denial about race. Of course there is racism. And it's not just people with dark skin who are targeted. My family is inside eating lunch. This mixed-race family was split apart at a restaurant. I need to stay outside because I'm a foreigner. You're no more likely to carry the virus or be responsible for the virus based on your race, ethnicity, or national origin. Cynthia Choi is co-executive director of Chinese for Affirmative Action. We vehemently condemn that just in the way that we condemn the kind of anti-Asian uh, racism that we're experiencing here in the United States. In the U.S., the number of reported cases against Asian Americans has been rising. Since March, more than 1,700 reports have been filed, with women being targeted more than men. Like this attack in New York, when an Asian American woman was allegedly targeted for not wearing a mask. Just one in a string of racially driven incidents taking place not just at home, but around the world. You know Here's what I'm going to tell you. Where's the owner at first and foremost? Mm. You're speaking English. Where's the owner? Let me tell you something. No, you don't get me because I ain't said it yet. If I were you, I'd be quiet and let me talk. Do you understand me? Yes or no? All right. Here's what I'm going to say. This week, there was a 12-year-old girl that came in here and bought a tobacco product from you. I'm talking. When I get done talking, you can talk. A 12-year-old girl came in here and bought a tobacco product from you. You sold it to her. This young lady came in and challenged you about it. What you did was you came from around here 
tried to take her phone. Let me talk. And then you grabbed her by her face. Yes or no? Why? Why did you touch her? You did touch her. No, you touched her. I'm going to tell you this. Your ass got to go. I want the owner's phone number. I want it right now. You never put your hands on a black woman in our community. And also, you do not sell tobacco products to children. Do I make myself clear? Do I make myself clear? You put your hands on this woman, this queen from our community, and then you're going to sell tobacco products to children. No, you're talking to me. You don't talk to her. We're about to shut you down. Oh, yeah, we're about to shut you down. I want the owner's name. And number right now. Write it down. Yes. And his phone number. Or better yet, call him. You got to go. How dare you disrespect women and children from our community? You're selling tobacco to 12-year-old women, children, and then you're going to grab her? Man, stop it. The police have already been here, man. I know what I'm talking about. Tell them we are the black, original Black Panthers of Milwaukee. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. Hello, who am I talking to? Hello? Yeah, this is King Rick from the original Black Panthers of Milwaukee. We got an issue with your employee in the store right now. Your employee this week sold tobacco to a 12-year-old child, and then he assaulted a black woman who, who, who charged him up about it. The police have been here. Well, listen, man. You're talking to King Rick from the original Black Panthers. You don't know who I am? Don't put me on hold. Fuck you. You playing. playing. No, there's no sorry. You got to go. I want you to write the owner's name and number down on a, on a piece of paper. Don't let nobody in this door. And then you're going to assault this young lady? What is his name? The show. Hey. It's right there. The shot right there. Where is it at? Yeah, dark. Right there in the corner. For sure? I go. If I come back here and you're still working here, it's going to be a fucking problem. Do I make myself clear? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you speak English? You heard what I said. Do I make myself clear? Yes or no? Let's go. Hey guys, going on a nice leisurely jog here in the south, in a suburb, carrying a TV, and perfectly safe. Wonder why that is. I run with a mod. Alright, I figured it out. I've got my hat on backwards. I'm shirtless, like I'm on some episode of Cops. I'm running with a TV. Someone's gonna stop me now for sure. Because if not, what was the problem with the mod? All right, and we back on the forecast. And I want to say RP to the sister Brianna Taylor and the brother Jashan Hodge. Now, we cannot be afraid to protect ourselves. America was built off protection. I'm not telling you anything different than George Washington told America. And they put his face on a mountain. We are living in a country that spends more than anybody on self-defense. So don't ever let anybody tell you that defending yourself is wrong because all they're really trying to say is that our lives don't matter and we shouldn't be defending our lives. In fact, we should put our lives on the line to defend others when others will never do the same for us. But that's why we have to realize we are all we got. And until we build our own institutions, 
designed to protect us, then the same thing will keep happening. And right now, we can take the most successful black business people and elect a committee strictly to fund and help grow black businesses. And once they're in our neighborhood, we can not only support them, they can support us by hiring us. And once we start recycling our dollars in our own community, we'll be able to have our own institutions. And then when people come in and try to harm us, they'll understand that it's consequences. But until we have each other back, the same thing will keep happening. A cop can get on his radio right now and call up 10 other cops and they'll come back them up. And until we're in a position where we can call 10 other people who are armed to back us up, then we're not where we need to be. We need to be on code. Now, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, man, we have got to start standing for something or we're going to keep falling for anything.